This is Dr. David W. Kim. Today's video blog is about chin implantation and the different options as well as how it relates to rhinoplasty. There are a lot of patients that come into my office with either a complaint that their chin is too small or that their nose is too prominent. In reality, these two things are very intimately related. In general, the more prominent a nose is, the less noticeable a chin is and vice versa. In this young woman, she was concerned that her nose may be a little prominent and her chin a little under prominent. Well, in actuality, her nose is pretty good. You know, if we were just operating on the nose, we might identify this portion encircled and then just kind of reduce it slightly to create a uh, straighter overall bridge that makes her nose less prominent. But if we really want to balance her face, we would consider doing something here to augment her chin. And we might bring the chin forward conservatively. Um, in a manner like this to just counterbalance the face overall. And this is a relatively subtle change going from here before to here after, here before to here after, here before to here after. Now there's lots of options for chin implants. Uh, these silastic or medical grade silicone implants work very well. They're inert but they require a small surgical procedure. An incision is made in the upper neck just below the prominence of the chin. The bone on the lower border of the mandible or lower jaw is accessed and the implant is placed into a snug pocket beneath the periosteum or the lining of the bone. The incision is carefully closed and with this type of technique a fairly uh, dramatic change of chin contour can be made with a large implant or a subtle to moderate change with a smaller implant. And this is a technique that I use very commonly in conjunction with rhinoplasty. Uh, this is a patient who didn't like the prominence of her nose, uh, but when pointed out that her small chin also had something to do with that, she was open for both a rhinoplasty to smooth the bridge as well as a chin implant to augment the chin. And you can see the after picture here. Again, from before, a prominent dorsal bump and a small chin, and after, uh, the dorsum is reduced and the chin is augmented. You can see this also in the profile view. Uh, the bridge is a little high and the chin is a little small and in the after photo um, you can see that the chin balances the improvements to the nose um, and you can see on a side-by-side -side image. Now not every patient is interested in surgery. Um, this young woman uh, decided that she would prefer something that was non-surgical uh, rather than surgical and she didn't decide that she was ready for a, a rhinoplasty. So instead, we did something called non-surgical chin augmentation. In her case, we used an injectable filler, uh, radius, uh, and we did a 15-minute procedure in the office, which allowed for about a three to four millimeter increase in the projection of her chin. You can see going back from the before picture here to the after picture here, the nose looks less prominent because the chin counterbalances the projection of the nose. Uh, this is the before on the three-quarter view and the after on the three-quarter view. Again, the before on the three-quarter view and the after on the three-quarter view. And you can see that, again, the chin counterbalances the nose, making that look a little less prominent. And you can see a side-by-side -side here and a side-by-side -side here. Certainly, the amount of chin augmentation that's possible with an injectable filler compared to a surgical option is a little bit less. There's a limitation on how much filler you can place. The decision on which size implant to use for a surgical solution depends on the patient's anatomies and goals. But overall, chin implantation, whether it's surgical or non-surgical, is a great tool to balance someone's face, particularly when they don't have a prominent chin, and it's something that really complements the techniques of rhinoplasty.